Paula Kerman is a woman for all seasons. Look at me, Paula. We also go back to the ark. She's an award-winning writer, editor of Macaulay News, and with a smile and a camera and a guitar, she ends up at every social justice event in the city of Edmonton. She deals with oppressors with that same smile and with dignity. She is everywhere, sleet, snow, or whatever, documenting and reporting. And I welcome you so much here to speak with us about how activism operates in your life. Paula. Thank you, Audrey, for your very kind introduction. I, I, I try to smile even, even in times like today when it's really difficult to, to do that. Um, I really want to thank Whitney for her words because it is really important, something that's important in my life as well as as a privileged Canadian, activism has become a part of my life because I think that it's imperative upon us to give back and to protect those and to give voices to those who don't have those safe spaces and, and feel that they don't have those voices to be able to facilitate that. So I thank you for what you're doing and thank you for sharing your words here today. I, uh, I come from a Jewish background and in Judaism, some of you may already know that there's a concept called tikkun olam, which translates to healing or repairing the world. And much of my activism is rooted in this belief. And right now, there is a lot of talk about safe spaces in the activist community and elsewhere especially now in light of the Me Too movement. When it comes to establishing and maintaining my safe spaces, of course, the support of my family, friends, and community is important. Being able to confide, ask for advice, share experiences, and the opportunity to be accountable and hold others to account is part of having a healthy community. But like every part of society, the activist community is not immune from bullies and predators, which is why having a network of support is so important. Activism can't exist in a vacuum. We need to have people who we can turn to, who we can share with. Um, there have been situations where, I'm not going to go into them or, or, or into specifics, but where people thought they were safe and somebody in that particular group or, or space was not a safe person and there were problems because of that and it's important that's why it's important to be able to have people who we trust and who we confide in having safe spaces also includes finding a place and time for self-care sometimes our safe space has to be here and we have to take care of ourselves because if you don't take care of yourself you're not going to be able to take care of anybody else uh, activists often get so wrapped up in organizing and attending events that they neglect their own needs, leading to burnout and mental and or physical health issues. I've seen this activist burnout, it is a thing. Not being at our best, at the best we can be physically and mentally can make, also make us more vulnerable. We need to be safe to say no when we are stretched and to have the space to explore our own self-care needs. For me, music is an integral part of my safe space and my self-care. Like my faith, music was also a formative part of my activism. Through my mother, I grew up listening to a steady stream of Joan Baez, Bob Dylan, Buffy St. Marie, and Peter, Paul, and Mary. The folk music of the 60s helped shape my political beliefs and my own musical style when I began learning how to play the guitar and to write songs as a teenager. Much music is part of my activism and writing songs about social justice issues and performing at rallies and protests and events like this is an important part of that as well. For me, music is both a creative expression and a place of mental retreat. Putting on my headphones helps take me away from the stress of daily life, can calm anxiety and sometimes even help me concentrate. <coughs> writing and performing music, whether in front of an audience or in the privacy of my home, also cuts through stress and helps me focus. I find that if I go more than a few days without playing music, I get very tense and I feel incomplete. And as soon as I pick up a guitar and start singing, my sense of grounding and balance is restored. There are proven health benefits of singing, both physically and mentally, which you can research online. Uh, and as a congregation, I know that singing is a very big part of what you do as well. Um, and I can attest to many of these from first-hand experience. 
And besides being a part of my safe space, music helps me to reach out to audiences with messages of peace and love and social justice. I will be sharing some of these songs with you. I'm happy to share some of these songs with you today. And I welcome, and I welcome you to join me in my place of sanctuary. Thank you very much. So I'm going to do uh, some songs that I often perform at, at rallies and events. Uh, this first song I have been performing for about 10 years. At a variety of, of mostly peace rallies. It's a song that I wrote specifically about the conflict in the Middle East. But in a broader context, it's about standing up for what you believe in, in the face of people who may not agree with you. And the song is called Walls. about 10 years ago. Uh, as Audrey mentioned, I'm, I'm the editor of Royal Macaulay News, which is an inner city community newspaper. And uh, about 10 years ago, behind Bissell Center on 96th Street, a tenth city popped up. And one day, uh, me and a group of my friends decided to go pay a visit to the tenth city and, and see what was going on there and meet some of the people there. I thought it would make a really good article for the, for the newspaper, too. 
And uh, it was the day that the, uh, the prod was provincial lands. It was the day that the province uh, was pulling the, the tents out, for, forcing the people to leave. And the one thing that really struck me there was how many people there in that tent city were not people I used to stereotypically think of as being homeless. They were regular people. Uh, they were people just like you and me. They had one bad thing happen to them and then another bad thing happened to them and they found themselves on the street. Some of them were even leaving the camp to go to work and coming home at night to the camp. And this is a song that I wrote, it's a story of a homeless woman. And it's called Summer and it's inspired by that time. We were born 
by the sea in a sense lost early in those moments when we knew each other we were flowers in a garden raindrops in a in autumn and I am still here though you walk behind in silence I am still Sound off we run underground till it's done. A final blast shakes the core, happen fast. Then no more In those moments when we knew each other We were flowers in a garden Raindrops in a river Falling leaves in autumn And I am still here Though you walk behind in silence I am still here still here still here and I am still here still here still here and I am still here My last song is uh, another song that I've been doing from, for quite some time, and I know that Ali and Audrey won't let me out if, you're, if I don't sing it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I had a special request for this one. And it's actually the one song that I didn't write that I do regularly. This is a song uh, by a man named Leon Gecko. He's from Argentina, and he wrote this song about 40 years ago. And it's really appropriate for a Unitarian church like this because it's, it's a prayer, but not in any one specific religion, asking that we should not be indifferent to suffering, to injustice, and to war. The song was originally written in Spanish. I, I do it in an English version of it. And the song is called, I Only Ask of God. Find me empty and without having given. 
love of God. That He won't let me be indifferent to deception. If a traitor knows something more than the rest of us, then we should not let him be easily forgotten.